And good morning, everybody. Uh, we'd like to welcome you again to the Fort Leavenworth Multicultural Gospel Service, Bible, Table Talk. Um, I am Clayton Bridget, Minister Clayton Bridget. Today, I have our pastor with us, Chaplain Anselmo Brilliant, and we have a new panel member, my sister in Christ, Sister Lolita Lop. Good morning. Um, this morning, uh, we told you guys that we would be talking about uh, a, a second part of what it is that we have going on um, in the church. So last month we did, you know, the perception of the church today. And as we continue on uh, with this part of perceptions, uh, we're going to be talking about you know, the, perception. the perception of mental health in the church. And so um, this morning, uh, just so give you a little background, Sister Lolita has been doing a course um, in her class talking about mental health. Um, in, in her uh, religious class that she was doing. And Chaplain uh, Brilliant is actually a counselor. So we have experts, so to speak, on the panel today. And we just want to go ahead and, uh, and get into it. Um, we've already done our introduction. So Chaplain, could you lead us in prayer? Yes, let us pray. Lord, we thank you once again for another time to gather together, Lord, and to dive into your word. Lord, in the relevant topics in our society, Lord, in reference to your word, Lord, we pray for your wisdom in this hour, Lord, wisdom to navigate, Lord, O oh God, and talk about certain obstacles or perceptions, Lord, O oh God, that have, that have hindered or, or, or been a struggle for many, Lord, in the faith, and we ask for your guidance, Lord, O oh God, continue to open up our understanding and let this be a fruitful time that we may grow and others may grow in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. So as we, uh, as we begin the topic, um, I always like to start off with a couple of questions that will spark the topic. Um, yes. Today, we'll probably go a little bit longer than an hour. Um, depending on how well this discussion actually takes us and how it goes and the questions that we um, receive. Um, one of the first questions that um, I would like to open up with is, why is mental health an obstacle, right, or even something that ostracizes Christians today? I think it's, for me, I think it's a um, culture thing. Um, especially in the um, communities of people of color, um, it's frowned upon. It's you know, it's it's a weakness. Um, you why are you talking to a therapist? You know, you know. I've heard many things. Just pray and you know, trust, trust God. God and you know. And yes, you do pray and you trust God. But if your mind is so clouded and so you know. Um, blocked by things that are going on in your life you can pray you can pray you can pray but you're not going to hear from God yes. because it's a two-way conversation mm -hmm. and if I'm praying and praying and praying but I'm not here receiving then it's not doing me any benefit right chap what, what do you got yes I, I I agree you know um when my uh when my mother was sick with uh with cancer it was very hard for us to get her to go see a doctor because it was taboo either you know um, you didn't have the money or people went to the hospital and died and so it was kind of okay and we have to understand they're practicing medicine but you're right culture plays plays um, a, a big part in that and in our perceptions of of mental health um, and we think about mental health we think of a psych ward which in essence that's one aspect of mental health um, but not, not, not every aspect of that. And sometimes you, you need someone to talk to. Um, you, you know, depending upon our faith, we, you know, God is there. We understand that he is there. But oftentimes for us as humans, we need a connection. And, and if it's, like you said, if our mind is cluttered and it's very hard to hear from the Lord, we need somebody else in the faith. And, and the Bible talks about that. It said, carry one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so we should be open as individuals, um, not to provide advice, but to just to hear. Just to hear others and pray with them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so over the last, I think, month and a half, we've been talking about doing this segment. 
And I know that um, I've asked some people at my job, I've asked some of my other friends, um, talk to my family about it, talk to my wife about it. Um, and the negative perceptions really come out, like you were saying, culturally. Um, I have a, I have a, a Colombian friend, um, a couple of Puerto Rican friends, a couple of Mexican friends, and you know, and I talk to them because the minority races, African Americans, we all we all been told, hey, you, you, like you said, you got to pray it off, you got to pray it off. And um, I was watching a television show uh, one time that they they had a, a case. It was a, a of course a fictitious court case where they had that the son was mentally ill. The father didn't want to uh, acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. And it was because of his religion, his faith. And the sister was the one that, you know, that was shocked to know that the grandmother actually had mental illness and it skipped a generation. Wow. You know, and so uh, it was the perception that, hey, you know, no, no, you know, we, I'm not going to disclose that. I'm not going to mm -hmm. disclose that. Because again, it was so shown as a weakness. Well, you know, we get the thing about, um, and we'll take soldiers. We'll take soldiers, for instance. A lot of soldiers suffer from PTSD, whether it's mild, severe, you know, moderate, whatever the case is. And, you know, we come back from deployments, we come back from Iraq, Afghanistan, things like that. Uh, and, I, and I will tell you, I know what helped me get through was my faith, okay, the faith in God. Uh, going to see, you know, mental health experts and things like that, you know, getting the right type of medications to help balance, you know, balance you. because medications are not bad they're not of the devil but that's what you know people think and so as we look at mental health in the church again it's a taboo thing you know one of the one of the questions that that my wife uh, sent to me uh, this morning as I was getting ready to leave was why do we never preach it in the church why do we never preach about mental health chaplain you know, that's, that's, that's an interesting question, and um, I, I think you touched on it a little bit there because um, um, and, and, and just the perception that, that uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong here, that yes, the Word of God is, is powerful, it's essential, it has application in our lives, and it's very important, and... and but we, we have to understand that from what's being preached and the hearer, then there's biblical application. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a lot of times people don't know what that application is or how to take that application. And we think by, just by praying for them and casting out a demon is that they're going to be healed. But not everybody's demon possessed. Mm -hmm. They could be struggling in their mind or, you know. Um, needing deliverance up here and and prayer is good right, yes. right. we're thankful yes. for prayer we're yes. thankful for the word but now what is the application of all that how are we helping people apply it to their lives and make that first step of change because the first step is always fear fear of trusting God to be able to do what he needs to do in their life and think about this right um and, and i'll use an example and uh, we have a brother in the hospital right now rj mm -hmm. right he right. went to the hospital because his left side paralyzed well yes we are praying but he also sought medical help and i'm very thankful right, right because right, the right. medical doctors have been given the mindset the experience they know the body to be able to help that individual to to recover and prayer and application of faith is what help it, is helping him to recover. Right. So, Lolita, I'm going to ask you this one. Um, so do you feel like that people that are seeking um, the mental health aspect outside of the church, they have no faith or their faith is, is little in God? I mean, how do you feel about that? No, I don't think so. Um, I can, I can say <clears throat> from my experience, um, when uh, Michael passed, um, you know, we prayed for, you know, he was diagnosed in March, passed away, you know, seven months later, very aggressive form of cancer. Mm -hmm. 
And so, you know, we prayed, we had people around the country praying. And so, you know, I remember him telling me, you know, a vision that he had. He said that God gave him that we were going to be sitting on the porch, you know, you know, watching our grandchildren play. So when he passed, you know, it was like devastating. So you're like, you know, it's not that your faith is is gone. It's just that it's, it's shaken. Right. But what I said is that because of the foundation that I had, you know, growing up in church, Sunday school, women's ministry, you know, Bible study, all of that laid a firm foundation that when my faith was shaken and I needed to seek help and guidance, the prayers that pr people prayed for me and the prayers that I prayed for myself were, was able to let God in at the very precise moment and say, you know, no. You, when I wanted to, and most people don't know this, when I wanted to end it all, mm -hmm. I was done. It mm -hmm. was one night. I said, I'm done. I, I can't this do this. This is too heavy for me own. to this carry. This is too yes. heavy for me to carry. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to, and, and most people don't, most people don't know that. Right. You know, I would have been one of those persons that, you know, my, one of my daughters would have found me and they would have said, you know, you guys would have said, oh, she seemed so strong. She was always mm -hmm. smiling. Mm -hmm. She was always this. But most people didn't know that I was seeking deep, deep down in depression. Mm -hmm. I was in a pit. Right. But if it wasn't for that foundation that I had and being able to hear the Lord, even in that still small voice mm -hmm. for him to say, no, yes. it is not your time yet. Yes. I still have things for you to do. Mm -hmm. And and it, it kind of brought me out just a little mm -hmm. bit enough where I can say, okay, no, I, I don't care what you're saying, devil, because, you know, the devil's voice is like yeah. this, and God's voice is, you know, it's still, but it's powerful. Mm -hmm. But he was able to penetrate my mind enough so I can be able to seek help. Mm -hmm. And that's where my faith came in, because I had faith in praying for a Christian counselor. A Christian yes. therapist right. and God led me to the perfect therapist for me when I walked into her office and I you know bawled my eyes out and mm -hmm. told her what was going on and she said Lolita I just want to tell you one thing God is with you yes and I was I was I was done after that and that was the first time when I not interviewed a few therapists and that was the first time when I went into her office and sat with her she mentioned God Wow. And I didn't tell anyone that I was seeking a mm -hmm. Christian therapist. I wanted it to just be there. Yes. And she just told me, she said, God is with you. He has never left you. He has Amen. always been with you. Amen. Okay. And I think that foundation, if you if we give our kids and our yes. um, our member our um brothers and sisters that firm foundation, that's something to fall back on. Yes. You know, I, I'm looking at I'm looking at my watch to look at the messages that that I had before with the questions. So, um, and this is one that that you you just mentioned. You just kind of mentioned it. Let me find it real quick. Um, and it says, "Why should ministry leaders um, encourage our youth or our flock, right, to have good mental health? Why should we do that? It's important. You see, and and, and that's the thing, brother." Um, you ask that question, but mental health, good mental health begins in the home. As like Sister Lolita says, it begins with those spiritual disciplines. She had the foundation, so when things begin to shake or fall apart, she had something to grab a hold of, and that was her faith. And and and, and that's the thing. We you know that that negative perception of mental health, but but positive mental health is happening at the early stages right and right. what we're teaching our children how to cope with this and 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 a lot of times we see a person's personality or they might suffer from sadness or depression and we as parents help to bring them out and say no this is not the way Let me, let's develop some things for you let's channel that energy that you have and and those those are the things that that we as parents begin to help our kids to have positive ways of coping with their stress and, 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 and those spiritual disciplines, very important. Prayer, Bible reading, right. um, um, taking the time for silence and hearing God's voice. Mm -hmm. what's, what's very interesting to me, Sister Lolita, and, and what you said is that God in the middle of all that the devil and his imps and all those demonic forces were trying to do you in 
even in the middle of that, you heard God's still small voice. So God will speak in the struggle. He will speak in the turmoil and give us faith and hope um, if we're listening and choose to. So and that's what I and I have my blog post and it's called the blessing in the storm yes. because for me um, that was my blessing in the storm mm -hmm. hearing you know that God you know cared and that I was mm -hmm. important when you know the enemy was in my head saying oh God doesn't care about you he took your husband away mm -hmm. he took you know you right, know took right. this away yeah. you, you know right. you have nothing now you can't do this you yeah. can't survive you know and then you know I was able to and I wonder you know, for the people that don't have that foundation, that don't know God, or didn't even, didn't know God before, you know, tragedy struck in their lives, what do what do they do? Right, right. Exactly. Because in this and this is in this world we get suicides and we get mm -hmm. all this from because they don't ha they didn't have they don't have God to speak into their lives and say no, you can't do this. I have more for you. Mm -hmm. I love you mm -hmm. and this and that. But if you're not hearing that, you're only hearing from the devil. The next thing you know. You know, there's another tragedy. Right. And I, and I think that's why Jeremiah 29 and 11 is very important for people to understand because truly uh, God does have a plan for us, yes. even when we don't see it coming. You know, um, like you're saying, you know, you, you were done, yeah. you know, but with God saying, no, Lolita, you're not, yeah. you know, you're, you're still prospering with the youth. Right. You're still being positive with them. You know, you're still uh, giving back in the women's, you know, with the women's ministry. You're still doing all these things because, again, you didn't let the devil, right. as we say, come in right. and, and take your mental mind because you let God be in the, in the forefront. And I think that's what's very important is that we have to realize that um, no matter how bad we might have it, right, somebody else has it worse. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and I think I've, I've always said this, you know. Um, like the song says, you know, don't look as bad as what you've been through, <laughs> you know, because we, we are going to go through a lot in our, in our lifetime and everything. Um, it's just, um, just one more thing. It was just that. And for me, also, when God gave me that just little bit of clarification, I saw my girls mm -hmm. and I saw the kids that I mentor and I, I automatically felt guilty the Holy Spirit convicted me right. because I felt like a hypocrite because I'm like I've been you know when life was quote-unquote good mm -hmm. you know I'm telling them well you have to work through mm -hmm. it you know God is always there for you and mm -hmm. you know even you just have to push through it and here I am ready to give up right. granted it's a very very tragic you know um, moment in my lifetime and, and a lot of people, you know, on the outside would understand why I would give up. Right. But in that instant, I said I couldn't. Because what what type of legacy or what type of impact would that have on mm -hmm. the people in my life? Right. Um, so as we're, we're talking, uh, Carolyn Fontaine, mm -hmm. you know her, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, she, she has uh, sent two uh, comments. She says, great Lolita was the first one. And then she said, it's a never ending battle. Okay, and so and, and I'm and, and I'm happy that people understand that, you know, there are things that we want to talk about and we want to make sure that, that everybody understands because again, what we're trying to do, we're trying to impact other people, you know, as we as we do this. Um, I, and I'll share this because I was talking again to my wife this morning and I, and I talked to you guys prior to me coming in, but last night we got into a car accident. Um, but for me, when um, I got into that car accident, I had a moment of uh iraq okay trauma trauma right you know i you know here here's a vehicle coming at me and one of the things that we always looked at when we were driving as you know soldiers in iraq you know vehicles entering your convoys mm -hmm. you know things so that happened for me last night now last night i also um i'm thinking about it now going back and and i'm having those those signs and mm -hmm. uh, in my head, but I, I bring that up because last night I had a moment to where I could have been angry about the accident. Um, Sixteen-year-old girl uh, was driving, was uh, told to come out into the lane because somebody else was trying to turn in, and she ended up partially t-boning us last night. Uh, Sherry and I, and we had a, another passenger in the car, and the thing about it was is that the girl was visibly upset 
visibly upset. And <coughs> in that moment, I'm like, okay, it's not going to do me any good to start fussing, you know. I just need to make sure everybody's okay, you know, and, you know, her passenger was okay. But I think for me, uh, the mental moment for me really kicked in when uh, the grandmother was on scene and then mom came later. And I had to go into, I'm not going to say religious mode, but I had to go into calm mode to really, you know, kind of diffuse calm what was going on and, and calm everything. So, again, cooler heads prevailed. Uh, got a chance to talk to mom after, you know, we got the tire changed on my truck and she was waiting for the tow truck to come. And the, the thing I told her was, you know, she's 16 years old, right? And, and, and it happens. Things like this, they happen. But what we have to do is it's a teachable moment, right? And you, you're going to fuss. You're going to do all this stuff. But what does God want you to do in this moment? You know, and, 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 and love God, love people came to me at that moment. What I told her was, I said, mentally, your daughter is destroyed right now. Okay, you've already fussed at her. Uh, you've done it publicly. Her confidence. Her, right. Her emotional. confidence, her, her, her ability to, to drive has now, you know, been taken away from her or whatever. But in this moment, what you need to do is you need to love on your daughter and let her know everything is okay. That's going to calm her mental spirit. Yes. Right? Um, for me... As I was doing that, and I guess I went into that mode again because now we're driving back home, you know, and everything. And I'm just, everything is coming back, you know, what happened, what we could have did differently, you know. Um, if we'd have been five minutes late, you, you know, all that stuff comes to your head. Uh, processing the trauma. Process, right, processing the trauma and everything. But the first thing that I thought about after all that flashback and came was mentally, God was with us, Amen. you know, and, and that's and that's how you have to look at it. God was with me in the moment that I was testifying and, and, and giving a testimony to mom, you know, talking to grandmother, you know, and just letting them know it's OK. You know, grandmother even said, well, yeah, you know, you you real calm right now, <laughs> you know, because you could be mad. You know, you got a nice truck. You got this. But those are things, you know, those are things. Let's look at what God has created. He's created us, and, and we have to be good for one another. And so that was the mental health aspect of it. Because we all know when something bad happens, everybody gets We're crazy. Focusing on the negative. Exactly. You yeah. took you took that that positive out of it and focused on you chose to yes, yes. focus on the positive, even with all that traumatic thoughts in your mind and mm -hmm. the smell sight sound that brought back those exactly. those right. memories you chose to wait a minute i'm here in the moment now mm -hmm. i'm mm -hmm. not there right. let me do a mental right. shift and right. let me be present here exactly but he also yeah. created a positive moment in that 16 year old's life yes. to where because this is something she's going to remember you know right. this might have been her first accident so this is something she's going to remember forever. Yeah. So she's going to come back to that moment and remember how, you know, mom may have been, you know, you know, going off the deep end, but <laughs> you stay calm as right. a person. You stay calm and then you talk to mom. So when they, hopefully that when they went back after the advice that you gave her, when they went back home, it was a calm, teachable moment. And yes. like um, Chapman was saying, not only, look, you know, we always hear ministry, you know, the Bible says ministry starts at home, but so does our mental health starts yes, at home exactly and so if she's going home and say look okay i know this is an accident you know regardless of the circumstances and so we're going to deal with it from there so yes. that what could have been a very very negative thing turned into something better for her right yes. and and my wife just uh sent a comment she said god wants us to be good disciples to others yes which is i, yes. I think in, in that moment that's what i was trying to be yes. You know, um, Sherry was, was contacting everybody, letting everybody else know that we were okay. Um, Jarvis was on the scene um, helping us out and everything. But, you know, but yeah, we, we that's what we have to do. Because, again, you know, me going off the deep end didn't help, wouldn't help the situation. Uh, Mom was already, in, in a way, you know, Grandma was, was trying to calm, you know, the daughter down and everything. So, yeah, but that, that's that's where we are. And so, and I, I just felt like even in that moment, because I was even telling them about, the, the live session today, you know, that, you know, we were going to be preparing to do it to see if they, you know, wanted to even, you know, just log into it or, or whatever. But um, we didn't exchange that much more information. But, but yeah, just let you know that we, we have to be mentally set no matter where we are because we don't know what's going on. Right. Um, 
the next one. Uh, you know, I would like to say something. Yeah, go ahead, John. So, in, in, in light of this, like, in, in, I've talked to pastors and, you know, seen their, you know, disdain for psychology. But you, you, you look at psychology. Psychology is actually the study of the soul. And what do we, he, what do, we do every Sunday, every Bible study, every, you know, Monday Zoom Connect, every right. Tuesday? What are we studying? Right, yeah. What are we feeding into? The soul, the psyche. That's right. Because, the, you know, because your soul, heart, mind is connected. And then the mind, and, 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 and there's very different ter- interpretations of this, but the mind is actually connected to, to your soul. Right. <laughs> you know? Yes. Right. Um, you, you think about um, people that are leaving this earth, and there's been many instances where they see themselves, their, their, their body down low and their soul. Well, guess what? There has to be some kind of mental faculty for them to understand what's happening. It's not just your soul leaving the body. There's, you know, what is your soul comprised of? Because when we stand before the Lord, it's going to be what the deeds done in this body. Well, how will we know and remember the deeds done in this body Mm -hmm. if it's not intertwined and connected? And so that negative, that, that, and it's really misunderstood, uh, uh, how do you say, a lack of understanding right. of what psychology is. Because it is. Mm-hmm. The Bible talks about the mind. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's right. Then he says, put on the mind of Christ. Mm-hmm. He is talking about mental health. Right, yes. And it's there in the word, in the church. And so, understanding that gives better light to this topic mm-hmm. that yeah, that we are feeding the soul. Yeah, uh, uh, Elder Hank, he just sent he sent a message in. He said the Holy Spirit will give you words uh, to say during the traumatic experience. Uh, Philippians four four through seven. Yeah. You know, and you know yeah. he's right. You know, it, like you said, it's in the Bible. The psychology is there. And also going off what the chaplain said about the psychology is the study of the soul Mm -hmm. and we feed our soul when we are in Bible study and Mm -hmm. and getting the word but also we have to the Bible tells us to guard our heart and so when we are I remember last summer when everything was going on last summer I was like infuriated and and just obsessed with what was going on Mm -hmm. and the more and more negative things I was taking in reading off the internet and all that the more it was affecting me that I had to pull back and say well even talk about this with my therapist where she even said okay you need to pull back Mm -hmm. and you know do something else you know not focus on that because the more you put that stuff in it's going to resonate in your so and then it's going to start coming out of your mouth mm-hmm. and so i you know you have to replace that or, yes. or or at least balance it out with the word of god and Amen. hearing god's word because yes we're going to look at the news and we're going to react to what's going on but it's how we react to it yes. and that's how and that also affects our mental ability to react to things right if, like the way you reacted you mm-hmm. could have went off right you know you could have been justified very very upset Mm -hmm. but you at that moment you made a choice and we all have that choice to make where we can choose to do it one way or we can choose to do it God's way right right you know and it's kind of funny that that we're talking about the the whole psychology (coughs) you know in in the Bible at this point because I know like you wrote your paper Mm -hmm. right and Chaplain you've probably written a lot of papers you know dealing with this subject or whatnot um how do you think the mental health of everybody during, like what you were just talking about, during the pandemic, right, has really affected the way that they are really looking at coming back to church? Because we talked about it a little bit on the last segment, you know, because we, we were talking about how we're going to get people back in. But now, let's look at the let's look at the mental capacity of everybody now that has been, you know, quarantined for a while. You have uh, some of the elderly that are used to coming back to the building that that are not coming back. Um, They're used to having Sunday dinners with people coming over and and that's limited. You're looking at families that normally like getting together now. We're getting to some type of normalcy now, but even that normalcy has some type of mental um, 
effect on how people are going to be coming out because I mean look CDC is saying hey if you're vaccinated if you're fully vaccinated you don't need to wear a mask yeah, two weeks yeah. right you know after two weeks after being vaccinated you know you don't need to wear a mask around other people but we still have people mentally that are saying hey I'm not doing that and I'm gonna be honest with you I'm I'm one you know that when I go still go into a store I'm still wearing my mask mm -hmm. okay um, I know that we all have been vaccinated uh, you know and everything um, but the thing about it is how do you think that people, again, that are used to coming to church, that are older, they haven't been coming, where do you think they are right now, mentally? I think part of it is um, a little bit of fear because we still have a known virus, a known enemy that's mm -hmm. out there lurking. And um, in reality, not everybody's doing the right thing. Right, right. And so you can only... Um, um, protect what what you know to do right and, mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and do what's right and so there, there's still a little bit of fear about that um, another aspect is people have gotten comfortable okay comfortable with not having to get up watch while they're eating their pancakes on Sunday morning or cooking breakfast and mm -hmm. it's become a way um, and even before the pandemic people were doing that right. but people get used to not having to to come into the house of the Lord, and um, and there's different um, discussions about that and 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 views on that, but there's there's nothing like gathering with God's people, and the Bible says, "Forsake not the assembling of yourselves," um, because it a lot of things happen, in, you know, in the building that a lot of people are not privy to by watching, right? 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 Because we shut off the broadcast or. Right. You know, there's healing taking place. We don't put the cameras on people that are coming to the altar or are being impacted by the word. And so you feel God's presence moving. You don't, you know, at home, you don't get to see the friendly usher smiling at the door, Brother Sam out there, smiling at the door, you know, come on in. Right. And so that's part of connection. And we can get comfortable of being in our, you know, and I know there's people with sickness and shut in and I understand that. But there's something that we miss with that connection of gathering in the temple, mm -hmm. um, gathering in, in, in the building um, as believers, because God is moving and God is using people to minister to you. Right. And so um, what you need is in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, where two or three are gathered in his name. That's right. He said, I will always. And so amen. that's very important for for our stability as human beings and mental health. Okay. Um, depending on what personality we are, whether we're introverts or extroverts, we still need community. I have to agree. I, I definitely agree with Chaplain because um, I think when I first started coming back in the church, it, and I think maybe, maybe, maybe someone, for me, it was having a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So when Clay would say, okay, I need you to come in and sing, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, Okay, you know, so that that was the thing that kind of brought me mm -hmm. back in. And the more I came, the more you I became comfortable. more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Um, I have been watching at home and, you know, I see, you know, I can I can only imagine what was going on like behind the camera. But I'm like, wait a minute, what are they doing? You know, yeah. what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. and it's different than when you are here. But we also have to be very very careful of the people that are still you know kind of apprehensive about mm -hmm. coming in and you know and not to do anything to make them feel you know guilty about mm -hmm. you know staying at home you know come in you know when you're safe when you know, you're ready when you're ready um you know i even um had said maybe even one day you know turn the camera around so people can see that you know there's people distancing there's some people wearing masks there's mm -hmm. some people not so you're going to be welcome in whatever capacity you feel is safe for you mm -hmm. right. you know to come in so i think for me it was having a responsibility you know right. to come in and mm -hmm. to be there because if you know if minister bridges say okay you know we're going to sing this sunday okay i'm going to show up because I was responsible to do that, but also once I got here, I was like, hmm, okay, this is this is this is this will work. This is doable. This is, this is doable. doable. Yeah. So so mentally you were good. Yes. Right. And see, and I think and I think that's that's where you know when we when we talk about it, when we talk about the again, the mental health about people being out, you know, and the mental health inside the church now 
and where we are, you know, because again, um, you know, because when we talk about the mental health in the church, it's not just the, you know, oh, uh, I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to see a doctor or anything, but we got to talk about how we're making people feel when they come here. Because again, church is like a hospital, right? People are sick. People are trying to get healed. And yeah. so the healing, the healing process, it starts all around. It starts everywhere. So I, I want to back up real quick uh, and, and hit back on our agenda really quick. Um, classifying mental health conditions as demonic, you know, personalities and things like that, demonic right? Possessions. Yeah. And, and so when we, when we, when we look at that, because um, Chaplin said, hey, you know, we're doing healing in here. You know, we're, we're mm -hmm. blessing people. People have, have uh, you know, mental health issues going on. You know, when they come up to the altar, they don't necessarily tell us. But if they tell, we're, we're going to pray about it, right? Um, why do people think that demonic possessions and personalities, why do they think that they're not allowed in the church? And, and, and does that really, Chaplain, does that really, you know, run people off from the church? You know, um, there's there's people you know that are demonically possessed, and um, there's people that are mentally disturbed. <laughs> you know, either outside influence of the enemy, because the enemy's overall goal is, you know, copycat of what the Lord wants is to fill, to fill us, right? Mm -hmm. We're celebrating the Day of Pentecost, but the enemy also wants to fill people and use them as to do his evil work. And so um, um, we have to understand that, that there, there are people that are demon possessed and either they will manifest that in a certain way or you know a person might not even know that they are. Um, and so, um, but when you come into the presence of the Lord, what happens? Um, let's look at, you know, in Matthew chapter eight, um, the, um, Jesus steps on the coast and here comes this demon possessed man and you know and, and, and he, he's a legions or demons inside of him mm -hmm. and, and, and the demons are speaking have you come to torment us before the time right and, um, and, and this guy's cutting himself and, and, and doing things and I'm not saying people that cut themselves are I'm demon possessed I'm not saying that right but they what I'm saying is that those demons manifest in some form fashion or other and um, um, being able to put your finger on it and, and be able to, to pray for folks um, um, for deliverance. Right. Because those demons have to come out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And they'll come out. Um, um, and we in the church should not think of that as taboo or think of this is the healing place of the soul. Right. And if we want people to find stability, certain things are demonic possessions. Mm -hmm. And other things are mental, mental struggle, mental instability, or like you said, genetics. Right, right. Um, when man sinned, what what happened? Kicked out of the garden, and mm -hmm. mental def you know, genetics skip generations and have the preponderance for depression, or you know, or or to be schizophrenic, right. split brain, or whatever. But those are genetic. Things and, and, and I think the, the knowledge is knowing the difference. Yeah. And not, you know, if you go to the doctor, right, and your arm is broken and they start working on your toes, you're like, wait a minute, time out, <laughs> like, stop. Right, right. right it right. takes a trained clinician to figure out, you know, and wisdom to, and guidance of the Holy Ghost to figure out what's really going on here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, all we have to do is ask. That's it. When people come to the altar and, 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 and and, and that's where I've, I've kind of changed my aspect of, of ministering to people is what can I pray for you for? Not just laying my hands on them and start praying mm -hmm. because I could be way in left field. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But hey, what do you need from the Lord? Right, right. You know, and I, I, I think that's where we need to be because the word of God as it goes forth is hitting people in different ways and where they are and in their world and as they come. Um, how can I minister to you? Mm -hmm. And that's what this demon-possessed man was coming. When Jesus appeared on the scene, he's running, like, falling on his face. Even the demons knew that they have to fall in their, on their face in the presence of the Lord. And, 
And so just understanding that that greater is he that is in us right. than he that is in the world. That's true. Is there a difference between um, demonic possession and being under the influence of a demon or the enemy? Um, because I, I was just going back and thinking about my situation to where like the enemy was ta I, yeah. talking smack, you know, in yeah. my, you know, to me. So um, is that is that kind of like the same thing? Well, or? so no, that's that's um, so the Bible says in Ephesians chapter six, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, right. against powers, mm -hmm. rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? Right. And so their goal is to enter. But how do they first enter? You have to yield. And how do you yield? Mm -hmm. In your soul, in your mind. Right. And so the first thing they attack is your mind. Mind. the mind on an outside level. Right, right. 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 <laughs> you know. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, and then when you let your guard down, then they Right. You know, and and so just just understanding that that not everybody's um, demon possessed. They could be under demonic influence, right? That's right. Be listening to the devil instead of to God, what God is saying in his word. That's right. So, Lolita, I, I, didn't, I never got a chance to read your paper. You didn't share it with me. I'm pretty sure you got a great grade on it um, or whatnot because uh, you worked real hard on that paper. I remember there were many nights you were like, hey, we got to go. This power rehearsal. got to go. Um, in your paper, was, was there, when you did your research, was there any cultural group that stood out more than the other with the perception of mental health in the church? From, I would have to say it was African Americans okay. more so um, that were, um, and I don't know if that's, that, that were more, um, I won't say totally against it, but more hesitant. African, yeah, more African, more hesitant against, you know, um, because, you know, when I grew up, it was, you know, and probably your household too it was like you know whatever goes on in my in our house stays in our house right, you know, it right. was that type of mm -hmm. you know attitude so we know you know years later that a lot of stuff went on in households that never got out but now it's starting to manifest itself in people as adults because mm -hmm. they never got a chance to deal with it okay you know um when when a child is um if a child comes to you and or you hear that a child express themselves that they want to harm themselves they want to kill themselves you know you know the parents would be like hey we're just gonna pray about it mm -hmm. no you yes you pray about it you pray for god to lead you to someone that can help this child that's true because there are too many kids that are dying by their own hands and it, and it doesn't have to be that way okay. because all they need to do is to get to someone that's going to help them you know get through the reason why they want it in their life mm, right, right you know right. you know there's a reason why there's a backstory you know that that the reason why they want to do it it's not just because they want to do it it could have been something that it could have been just even just a simple thing that someone said to them that just you know resonated in their heads for years and it never left their head I, I am a big proponent for therapy, and I actually think everybody should be in some form, of, some form of therapy at one time in their life, because simply because of what's going on in our world. Mm -hmm. I mean, we just came, you know, we're coming out of almost a year-long quarantine. We had racial unrest. We had a, you know, um, our political um, climate. climate is crazy. Everyone needs to be sitting. It should be a waiting list at the therapist's office. Everyone is sitting down so they can at least talk to someone. And a therapist is someone that, like you, if I talk to you, you pro me. I mean, you're going to, you know, but a therapist is going to Neutral be object, objective. Right, exactly. And they're going to give yeah. you advice. But yes, they care about your well-being, mm -hmm. but they're going to give you advice to help you get better, to help you, you know, heal. Right. You know, to help your mind focus. And when your mind is focused, you can do a lot of things. But when your mind is all clouded up, you can't do anything. Right. Right. No, you're absolutely right. So I, I want to talk about uh, medication now because, um, and, and, and I've, I've seen some things here with medication of people coming to the altar, I'm healed, and then they stop taking their medication. Right. That is not the preacher's, <laughs> you know, lane to be telling you to stop taking medication, okay? Go see your doctor, yes. talk to them, yes. right, right. And, and, and get the diagnosis yeah. that confirms what God has done in your life. Um, um, so don't, 
you know, it's not it's not wise to tell people that, and you can put yourself in a legal legal bind doing mm-hmm. that. And so, um, but there is this perception that medication is bad, right? Yeah. yeah but yeah. let me tell you, when we when we have a headache, yes. what do we do? Yep, we run to the counter. we run to the counter instead of laying our hands on our head and say, "Lord, heal my headache." Right. But what about both? Why not lay your hands on your head and say, yeah. "Lord, heal my head." And take that aspirin, right. Tylenol, Motrin, ibuprofen, whatever, Motrin, right, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, um, and, and, and so we, we have to use wisdom. Um, let me tell you, you know, Adam, Eve, you know, they had to grow and, and learn and, and, and the earth was cursed. But there were certain minerals and certain things and even the Native Americans use it today. They didn't have a doctor. Mm-hmm. My grandmother, hey, you're sick with the fever? Go outside and pull some of those leaves that I've planted right there. Right. And let me make you a good tea. Right. Or let me make some good chicken soup. Right. And, and, and so we have, you know, and every culture has their medication or mm-hmm. how to deal, you know, deal with things. And, and that's fine and that's good. Um, but, you know, there, we shouldn't be telling people not to take medication or have this negative perspective that medication is wrong. Right. right. Um, um, that's not, that's ignorance mm-hmm. to think that, you know, when our car is, um, the engine light shows up, where do we take it? To get a tune up. Yes. Exactly. Right. Yeah. To yeah. change the oil. Right. right. And sometimes we need to do a flush of our system and we need to do certain things medication wise and drink certain things to, to help our body. And so, for, you know, I don't think that's the church's place to tell people not to do those kind of things right um yes we believe in god yes we have faith let god do the work Mm -hmm. because you don't want to be responsible for someone you know having a mental break or doing something to themselves or someone else because of advice you told them and you're not a medical person now i've had people come to me you know you know say Hey, chaplain, I'm taking, you know, they, they prescribe this medication, but I'm hearing voices. Okay, stop, time out. You need to go see your, de- your doctor again. Right, right, right. And right. tell them what's going on that you're hearing voices because this is not working. This medication is not working for you. Mm-hmm. And so we have to use wisdom there. Um, can't tell them don't take your medication. Right. Um, but let's, let's just use wisdom in that medication is not bad. And that's my point. Right. Right. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, uh, some people can't just do things on their own. Um, and then, you know, again, the medic, like you said, medication is not bad. And everybody says, Oh, well, your medicine is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yes. But yes, Jesus Christ, the Holy spirit, God, they're going to, they're going to lead you to what it is that they know is better for you. Mm -hmm. You know? And again, like you said, that's why, you know, we have, um, these people that have these skills to be able to talk because um, we don't always hear the voice of God the way we should. Mm-hmm. You know, if that if that's fair to say, um, God could be speaking to us. And, and and again, in one of our other discussions, we said, "What is our burning bush moment?" Okay. Sometimes it doesn't come before you when you need it. It mm-hmm. comes after you've done whatever it was that you shouldn't have done. And so. Uh, that aha moment, that burning bush moment is, is never that uh, prevalent to us whenever we need it to be. You know, so no, medication is not bad. Like Chapel said, continue to take whatever medication you're on. And if it's not working, go back and say, hey, OK, it's not working. It's not doing it's not whatever. Um, and granted, even some of us uh, soldiers that, have, that, that are struggling with PTSD, some of us are further along in our treatment than others. Mm-hmm. You know, some of, some of us don't have to take medicine as much as we used to. You know, some of us have probably stopped, and, and, but some are still taking it. But they are fighting those quote-unquote demons, and they're, they're, pushing, they're pushing forward. Um, and even with um, therapists, the same same advice applies. You know, if you're not getting what you need from your therapist, find another one. Yeah, find another you know, one. I exactly. went through a few of them before I found mm-hmm. the right one because you're not going to have that connection with yeah. everybody, but you should have like a connection with your therapist mm-hmm. where I could go in and sit on her couch or chair and tell her, you know, everything. And that's the kind of connection you have. So if you're not getting the results, that if you're not getting better and you've been going to therapy, then it may be time to seek God and 
find someone else. You know, you pray about it, have your family to pray about it, and you, you know, find someone else. All right. So I'm going to go back to another question uh, from the watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is or should be the job of our church leadership here at the gospel service? Um, as far as encouraging youth flock to have mental health in the church while still believing in Jesus Christ and having faith and power in prayer? I would think the being an example. To me, I feel that um, I am an example of, you know, getting my mental health in check and still having faith in God and and doing what I need to do for the kingdom of God. Because if my mental health is not in check, I can't do, I, I'm not of help to the kingdom of God. I can't do anything for God. Okay. You know, I cannot. I know, you know, the Bible said we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. Mm -hmm. But if I don't believe that because my mental capacities are not, you know, where they should be, it doesn't, it, it won't matter. So to me, I think being a living, walking example of that to where you know someone can say you know like you don't look like what like you said earlier you don't look like what you've been through so for someone to look at me and say i'm okay with someone looking at me and say okay no she's not perfect but she made it she survived or someone tell me i'm not a survivor i'm an overcomer i've done more than survive i've overcome a lot of things to get to the mental place where i am right now and it's not perfect i have my ups and down days but human, just, just as we as leaderships need to be that living, walking example. Okay, Chapel. You know, when you were talking, you know, um, something else came to my mind. Not only that your example, but I've been on your, on your Zoom Connects on Tuesday and I need to get back on here shortly. But the way you interact with the youth and you provide that avenue for them to, hey, what's going on in your life? I'm here, I'm listening. That's what we can do in the church. Mm -hmm. Stop judging people. Yes. Right. Okay. You know, stop. Not everybody's perfect. We are a spiritual, psychological hospital here where we ought to be growing and helping people to grow. When people come to the hospital with a sickness, we don't cast them out because, oh, we don't treat that sickness here. Right. Or we don't know how to treat that sickness I've, I've i've prayed for people that you know hey my, my wife has this and, and 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 i've prayed for them but the condition doesn't leave you see right because healing is a process we there's miracles and there's healing rj right now yesterday right. i got the facility of my arm and now i got the facility of my legs right. and now i just need strength healing is a process and we think that by one prayer healing is going to take place no it's a process and what did God put in the body, like in the body of Christ? Right. Some of us are hands, mm -hmm. some of us are ears, right. some of us are feet, some of us are nose, we're smelling, we're making sure, some of us are eyes, we're making sure the wolf's not coming, there, there's protection in, in the house. And some of us need to be the ears in the church. Mm -hmm. And that's why I see Sister Lita, she's an ear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. She listens to those youth and really draws it out of them and not only that goes around the horn and prays for them and puts them on her schedule that's what we need more of in the church okay. if we want that's how she's teaching good mental positive health biblical health in the church it's not just a, i'm here on sunday i checked in here's my time clock mm -hmm. bye right. right 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 that's not the facility the work of the body the bot, you know, we we all took the time this morning to wash our face. I hope, brush our teeth. I hope, you know, make sure we had our, you know, the body takes care of itself. And so, when one member suffers, the whole body suffers. Right, right, right. And we, those eyes are looking. Okay, mm -hmm. I need a hand to go over there and touch that person. I can't get there because I'm watching and praying. But somebody get over there and touch that person. Right. And there's been times where God lays people on our heart. Pick up the phone, call that person, talk to them. There's times where God's laid people on my heart and I call them out of the blue. I'm, not call I'm calling because, hey, God's laid you on my heart. Or I'm right. texting that person, hey, I'm driving and I'm praying and God put you, I'm praying for you right now. Mm -hmm. What that does for a person that God is listening, God is watching, 
God is concerned about us. And I think that's part how we can help that, foster that in the body of Christ. And that's one thing we can, you know, after this whole, you know, year, we can no longer go back to church as usual. Yes. That's done. Right. Yes. That's right. over with. We yes. have to find a different way to bring people back in. Yes. Because, but it, you know, if you want to be perfectly honest, the numbers in churches were dropping off before, before yes. the COVID. pandemic. Yeah, exactly. So this just kind of just... Yeah, right. <laughs> just kind of helped it yeah. a little bit more, but now we have to find a way. Not only just making people feel comfortable physically mm -hmm. to come back. What's going to make them comfortable spiritually right. and yes. bring them back in? Exactly. So we can no longer do things. The tradition is, you know, yeah. we can't do things by tradition. We have to do things according to what is going on now. What do the yeah. people need right now at this right. moment? People right. are hurting. People yes. are hungry. Yeah. People are thirsty. And, yes. and I was talking to Brother Sam, you know, um, the other day, and I was driving, and God said, "You know what? Call him. Um, he he's the right man to touch for this." And 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 we need to be out in the community. Yes, right, right. Yes, yeah. we can't be behind four walls anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are hurting. People are dying. And like Sister Lolita said, they're not going to come into the church because they already feel uncomfortable. They feel that this is a place where God dwells. They don't want to be judged because of their sin. Mm -hmm. But how do we make that connection with them? It's by our love. Like, no, come on in. Mm -hmm. And we are the church. Yeah, we, yeah, we are. are the church. Come on so in. Yeah. We have to take it. Take, take it, it out to our community. Right. Uh, you know, Brother Sam did put in there, he said, there are doctors that God uh, will send to you uh, for treatment. Yes. And again, you know, that it happens. Yeah. That yeah. was my doctor. Yeah. I will, Dr. Jacqueline Pfeiffer. She yeah. is a, she was God sent to yeah. me. And, you know, my, um, my daughter sees her, her, Good. Um, her daughter is a, um, she was going through um, her internship and she was a godsend to her because, you know, I hope I'm all for it. Mm -hmm. All for it. All right. <laughs> all right. So, um, you know, we, we've, we've done an hour. We, we wanted this one to go a little bit longer uh, today because it's, it's a very good topic. It's, it's one that I think that that um, that we spent time on doing live comments uh, as we're sitting here <laughs> getting questions. Um, at this time, I had a whole bunch of questions sent to me mm -hmm. um, so that we could ask, uh, get asked on the panel. And again, you know, everybody that's out there watching, uh, please continue to send your questions even after the um, the yes. broadcast is done. Uh, we'll we'll get back to them, and we'll we'll look at them, we'll answer them uh, whenever we can. We directly uh, respond back to you personally if we have your cell phone number, email address, whatever, or even on the Facebook feed. Uh, so we've been talking about a whole lot of stuff with mental health in the church, perceptions of the church, uh, the last two months, and so which is going to lead us into our next month's topic. Um, so it's kind of almost like a third part <laughs> to perceptions, if you, if uh, so to speak. So next month, uh, we are going to be touching on millennials and their perception um, of the church. We're going to have uh, another panel come in. Uh, Sister Lolita is going to come back and, and talk with us on Man. this as well um, because she is our youth leader here. Uh, she's one of our youth leaders here in the church. She does the the pretty much the teens, a lot of the teens. Along with Sharonda. Right, along with her daughter Sharonda. Uh, hopefully we can get Sharonda in uh, on this <laughs> next one as well. Uh, that, that's going to be a very good one if she can come in. Yes, yes, we uh, would love that. But yeah, we're going to have, we're going to, it's going to be a bigger, uh, a bigger panel next time because we really want to understand what the church, not just the gospel service here, but what the church in general is missing when it comes down to the young people, the millennials, the, the Generation Zs, um, where, wherever you are right now, that, that age between 25 and, and 35, we want to know what it is that we're missing, um, even as seasoned you know, churchgoers, seasoned veterans of the church, we want to know what we're missing um, to keep kids, and, and I say kids because you know, they're still our children, right? But to keep them in the church and to keep them wanting to come to church, uh, one of the things that I, I always been told, though, you know, in order to get something out of church, you got to put something into it. Yeah. So that's one thing that that we also want to convey to them as we get ready to talk about this topic next month. So again, we have about three weeks to prepare for it. Make sure we got everybody on the panel that can come in uh, to talk about it. But that's going to be a very interesting topic because again, we're talking about perceptions. Yes. Right perceptions in the church why people aren't coming back why we can't keep people in you know mental health all of that 
stems from that. And we talked about it today. Children need a strong mental outlook on the church because of who we are um, as a community, not just for ourselves, but for them and everybody that we reach out to. So, and, and I want to put. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned. This. I want to put put a plug in for our youth explosion. Oh yeah, this yes. upcoming Saturday. Boy, this month is gone. <laughs> but this is um, this is a place. You know, our youth has been struggling. Our youth during this time, thoughts of suicide, depression, and this will be a, a good function. We have plenty of space. It'll be geared for the youth. Adults are welcome. But a good outlet for them to come together, see their friends fellowship, hear a word from the Lord, mm -hmm. and then um, spend some time bowling and, and communicating with each other. So this will be a good positive thing um, for your kids, parents, um, drive them, bring them, please. And um, I think it will benefit and help our children to grow and, and find an outlet and we're live streaming that event as well, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. So that, that event will be live streamed right here um, this upcoming Saturday, yes. the 29th. Um, and we're starting at 5, five o'clock. We're starting at 5 o'clock. Um, I think that we're going to have a, a, a great time dealing with the children. And it's children of all ages, am yes. I correct? Yes. Children of all ages that we want to get in here. Um, and I know that Chaplin wants to do this one as they get ready to get out of school. And I think you're planning something for back to school. Back to school. Am I correct? Yeah. So, right. Awesome. So you're planning something for back to school. So we want to make sure that, again, we're reaching everybody. Um, we do this the fourth Saturday of every month so that we can make sure that we're giving a little extra um, having questions that are being asked of us throughout the month, throughout the weeks, the days that, we, that we're encountering uh, Christians or people that are trying to find out about Christ. Um, so it's, this is not just anything that we're pulling together amongst ourselves. These are real questions that we're getting from people. Um, these are real things that, that are coming to us. And we just want to share um, our insights and, and some of the conversations that we've had with other people so that they can understand that, you know, hey, you're not alone. Everybody out there is dealing with something. Everybody's dealing with something. So, uh, again, uh, Lolita, I thank you for taking out your busy Saturdays that you normally have to, to come and join us. Yes. Chaplain, as always, you know, you and I, we communicate on a regular basis about the next uh, topic. Brother Sam came in to, to show his support uh, this morning as well. He's going to be a panel member, a regular, um, in the future as well. Um, but other than that, I, I mean, I don't have anything else. Everybody good? You're good. Chaplain, you want to pray us out? Lord, we thank you once again for this time, this opportunity to gather together. Thank you, Lord, for what we've discussed here, Lord, oh God, and, and, and what has went out and what continue will to go out as people view and watch this and share with friends, Lord. Let it be impactful, Lord, oh God, and let, let people know, Lord, that we as the body of Christ are here, Lord, as a source and outlet to reach, to minister, Lord, oh God, and, and as we as believers to find our place in, in the house of the Lord and be a productive part of the body of Christ. Help us to reach, Lord, oh God, our generation. Touch those that are struggling right now, those in hospital beds, Lord, oh God, those struggling with, with thoughts of suicide, depression, and, and Lord, send, send a word to them, Lord, that there's hope in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Again, everybody, I'm Minister Clayton Bridget, Chaplain Anselmo Brian, and Sister Lolita Law. We thank you. We'll see you next month. Yes.